I'm Michael Despezio, a biologist, educator, and science author, and I'd like to talk about a very important current health issue that you are probably aware of. It's called the coronavirus disease, or COVID-19, and I want to share the science behind the virus and how to stop its spread. In our time together, I'd like you to build upon what you already know so that you can understand the why behind what medical professionals are saying about how to stay healthy. Okay, well, let's start at the beginning. What do you know about viruses? Most likely, you're aware that some viruses can cause you to get sick. Perhaps you've had the flu. It's an unpleasant and sometimes serious illness that is caused by a virus. Viruses can also cause other sicknesses, such as chicken pox, cold sores, and even the common cold. When you think of a virus, perhaps you imagine that it exhibits the characteristics shared by all living things using energy, reacting to stimuli, growth and development, and an organization based upon cells. Well, guess what? It lacks all of them. How can that be? Well, although it may sound more like science fiction than fact, a virus isn't really alive. It exists at the edge of life. To better understand what a virus is, let's examine its scale and structure. Viruses are much, much smaller than the cells they infect. Plus, they are much simpler in their organization. They lack nuclei, cell membranes, mitochondria, all the cell parts that help maintain the living condition of a cell. Instead of this complex cellular machinery, a virus is nucleic acid, DNA or RNA, enclosed in a protein coat. And that's it. It's pretty much a blueprint for making more viruses. Okay, now let's pause a moment and exercise your respiratory system. Take a deep breath, then exhale, keep going. As you breathe, air fills your lungs. Oxygen transfers into your blood while carbon dioxide is released during your exhalation. As you can appreciate, this organ system is critical to staying alive. It is also the target of all sorts of infectious microbes. With that background, let's connect back to COVID-19 and how this current health concern unfolded. In December of 2019, an outbreak of new disease was reported in Wuhan, China. Although it presented symptoms common to pneumonia, such as fever, coughing, and shortness of breath, scientists couldn't identify the microbe that caused it. It was something they had never encountered before. By the end of December, scientists had identified the microbe causing this serious and sometimes fatal disease. They called it the 2019 novel coronavirus. It was given that name because, first of all, it was discovered in 2019. Also, it was a new or novel type of virus. Lastly, like related viruses, it had a covering that resembled a halo or a corona. Novel coronavirus. Makes sense. Now, however, scientists have officially named this virus SARS-CoV-2, but it's also known as the COVID-19 virus, since the disease that it causes is called the coronavirus disease 19. Initial attempts to contain the disease were unsuccessful in Wuhan. Soon, COVID-19 was spreading to other regions of China. By mid-January, the infection had gone beyond the country's borders and it had been labeled an epidemic. An epidemic is when the numbers of cases of a disease increases rapidly over a geographic area. Now that the disease has become more widespread, infecting more and more people in other countries and continents, it has reached pandemic status. Many countries and some states in the USA have responded to the spreading of the virus and taken steps to control and contain it. For example, travel is restricted from some places with high numbers of cases. Large gatherings where germs might easily be spread are being postponed or canceled. In some cases, buildings in which infections were uncovered have been closed. Some people with mild symptoms or who have been in close contact with someone infected with the virus are being placed in quarantine. Some are asked to stay home. Others 
who may have been away from home are in quarantine locations, such as hotels or military bases, for example. During this time, they are monitored for signs of the infection. If they show no further symptoms after two weeks, they can leave quarantine. Any infection would be gone, and they would no longer spread the disease. More serious cases are brought to the hospitals where they are treated and isolated from other patients. One of the most effective strategies for containing the spread involves tracing the contacts made by an infected individual. By knowing whom they interacted with, officials can then test for further infections. Even so, the virus continues to spread to countries around the world. Now, let's bring our conversation back to your world and finish up by reviewing the science behind the recommendations from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. Unlike protection from chickenpox or the flu, there is no vaccination for coronavirus. Therefore, in order to prevent getting ill with COVID-19, you need to avoid being exposed to the virus that causes it. Another way to limit the spread of this virus and other diseases like the flu is to avoid close contact with anyone who is sick. And if you don't feel well, tell a parent or adult as soon as possible. They'll know what to do. Here's another suggestion, but I know it can be difficult. Try not to touch your nose, eyes, or mouth. If you cough or sneeze, have a tissue handy, and once used, dispose of it in the trash. And finally, one of the best ways to protect yourself is doing something that is simple and quite familiar. Wash your hands and wash them with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Do this frequently, especially before eating or after going to the bathroom and after blowing your nose, coughing, or sneezing. And try not to worry. According to the experts, by following these simple actions, you can help to prevent the spread of not only COVID-19, but other germ-caused illnesses as well. And there you have it, a new understanding that can help you make a better decision and hence stay healthy. I'm Michael Despezio, and thanks for joining me.